So this is actually about uh, programming for our Intel CN5 coprocessor. It's, I'm Mike Clem from Intel, and I'm talking about Mike, which is a happy coincidence, I guess. Um, OK, so there's a sublime message by my legal department. Let's forget about that. Um, so Python and HPC. Um, we are here because Python seems to be a cool language. We like it. Um, the HPC community is a very conservative community, to say the last, uh, so to say the least. So we heard F77 before. That's quite common still. So I'm, uh, last week I was still working on a 77 code. Um, some C, some C++, but Python is actually picking up a lot. So I heard numbers from LRC in uh, Germany, one of the tier zero compute centers in Europe, and they say that about 40% of their cycles go in applications that somehow deal with Python either as a wrapper or somehow as, uh, associated with it. And now that comes into the play is this uh, Xeon Phi coprocessor. That's uh, our accelerator for number crunching code. Um, so, you know, anything that is number crunching um, has a desire to number crunch faster. Uh, so a couple of examples are cheap haul uh, that I was working on. There will be a poster outside. Uh, Pfeiffer, that's actually the next presentation given by Freddy. Uh, so there are a couple of example applications that already use PyMic. Uh, to speed up their computations. Okay, so there are a couple of design principles in, uh, in PyMic. I, I call it the four Ks. Uh, I want it to be simple, slim, um, fast, and I want the programmer to have control where he or she needs the control, right? Um, the um, features that we have is um, we can offload native kernels to, to a coprocessor. Um, that's not a real restriction because most HPC applications that I'm working with in Python actually boil down to some native compiled code. Even the DNS solver that we heard earlier about um, was, num was using NumPy, which is essentially compiled code running on the machine. Um, and it also overcomes a couple of issues that we have um, with Python on the Xeon Phi coprocessor. It's not per se that our coprocessor is bad. It's more that um, have you ever, who ever tried running Python across 300 threads with one single Python process? There is one, and um, he's already laughing at me. <laughs> so, you know, there's the gill and everything, and uh, Xeon Phi has a, a, a lower single thread performance. So these are all problems where, where Python becomes uh, kind of an issue. Okay, it's not my baby alone. Um, there are a couple of fathers. I'm just the marketing guy, basically. Uh, going out and talking about it. So there's you see up there um, Hans Pops, a colleague of mine who implements the native parts of PyMic. There's Freddy, one of our users and also a contributor by now. And then there's my, me, myself, and I to make the project look bigger. I'm just the maintainer accepting the, um, the pull requests. Okay, so high level overview. So it all starts down at the bare metal where we have to execute native code. Um, then on top of that, we have a small Cython module to bridge the gap between C, C++, and, and Python. Then there's a low-level interface for those who dare to think about memcopy and you know, message passing style programming. And then on, to on top of that, there's a real nice, easy to use high-level interface that takes care of most of the things uh, for you. And then there's a small kernel library where we ship things that you might feel convenient for. Um, like, for instance, element-wise addition, you can just offload to the, to the coprocessor, and we have hopefully well-tuned kernels for that. Okay, let me give you an example. And DGEM is kind of my poster child example. So this is how you would write a true DGEM in NumPy. Um, so you create a couple of matrices, and then you write up the, the DGEM formula, alpha times A times B plus beta times C, and that's your result matrix. So that's a full DGEM, okay? Now, if you want to offload that, that's really easy. The only thing that you need to do is you get a device handle so that PyMic knows which coprocessor you want to talk to. Then PyMic is stream-based, which is kind of state-of-the-art in uh, accelerated and coprocessor programming. So you get a default stream so that you can actually distribute work to the devices. You load a library that contains the native code, and then you just tell PyMic to invoke the kernel, you pass in your NumPy arrays, you pass in all the scalar that it needs, and then you synchronize host execution with the device. That's all you need to do. And then what happens is PyMic automatically um, takes care of proper semantics, so it automatically copies in your NumPy arrays to the device, it runs the kernel, it copies out your NumPy arrays, and it does everything to make sure that the data is always consistent. Okay? Now, if you don't want that, um, 
Oh, right. There's one more slide. Um, the target side, that's really easy. Um, it's kind of an educated example, but you can, you can think about bigger kernels. So here, what PyMic does for you is it basically unmarshals the data so that you can th see the pointers to the raw buffers on the, on the target device. And then in this case, we just invoke uh, Intel's math kernel library um, to execute the DGEN. Right? And if you have a more complicated kernel, you can just um, implement that in C, C++, Fortran, um, any native language that, it, that we support on the coprocessor. Now, if you want to optimize the offloads, uh, you can actually do that um, by telling PyMic to bind a NumPy array to an offload array. And then PyMic attaches some metadata to it so that it knows um, that actually now you want to take care of the data transfers yourself. So in this case, um, we would transfer A, B, and C over to the target. We would then invoke the kernel, but at the end, PyMic doesn't do any copy in, copy out, and you need to uh, update the C array yourself, right? And you can, there's another example um, that I'm frequently using. Bear with the picture, I couldn't find a better model. Um, so basically, the idea, idea here is to treat a picture as a 2D matrix, and then you decompose the matrix. Uh, the picture in uh, two orthogonal matrices and a singular matrix, and the compression works like you throw away a couple of elements from the sigma matrix. Um, so for instance, the, the second picture in the top row, that's just one element in sigma, and you can already spot the, uh, the light areas and the dark areas of the pictures. That's uh, one compression algorithm that is, for instance, used to send satellite data from, from the satellite to Earth. Um, and it's, it's highly, highly effective. And so you can codify that in, in PyMic real easy. So there are a couple of constructor methods that we stole from NumPy. So you can create empty arrays, zero arrays, broadcasted arrays, whatever. So there's a couple of constructor methods. And for all those constructors, you can tell whether or not the NumPy array that you just created on the host should be updated on the device or on, on the host. So you can control any aspect of of the data allocation, and then basically it is allocate a temporary array, allocate the result array on the target device, not updating any, updating any host data, send over U, Sigma, and V, do two DGEMs, and then at the end only transfer the result array back and do the synchronization, and then reconstruct the image. So it's really easy, starting from the high level automatic copy in, copy out solution, you can work yourself down and add more fine and control of what is going on um, as, as you go and optimize. Now I promised Yossi to show a slide about his, his poster basically. So we applied that to about 2,000 lines of um, Python code intermixed with a native C code. And this is what we get on a, on a pretty decent sized uh, cluster, up to 40 nodes. So the blue line, that's the host performance of um, Chipo using Python plus NumPy or, and, and MCAL. And um, the, red, the red line, that's the offload solution. And if you want to talk relative uh, numbers, we get a decent speed up of about 2x um, by adding the offload um, processing. Okay, so what's PyMic? Well, I hope I was able to show in this short presentation that it's a slim interface. Um, I, I actually removed the lines of code um, metric because it's a very weak metric uh, talking about complexity. Um, but it's around uh, 10,000 lines of code uh, where uh, 5,000, 5, around about 5,000 is just tests and documentation stuff. Um, it can invoke native uh, kernels on the target. Um, we have, we have data that shows that adding the Python interface uh, to the native solution almost adds no overhead. It's below 1%, so it's within the error range, basically. Um, so it's almost nothing. And then um, future versions, so this is all based on Python 2 right now. We are slowly transitioning towards supporting Python 3. Um, in the future, that's an idea that I had while I was coming here. Um, I would like to actually support native kernels that you write in Cython. Um, so we, are, we won't likely do a full Python offloading, but at least you should be able to write your native kernel in Cython. And then a uh, future version will also bring um, events to synchronize between streams. It is open source, so if you're interested in it, um, please feel free to go to GitHub, search for PyMic, or take that link, uh, download uh, the latest and greatest version. It's quite stable now. There's also a mailing list that you can subscribe to, really low traffic, 
Uh, it's only mostly announcement and a, a little bit of user chatting going on, so you don't expect too much mails coming in from that. And with that, I want to sh show you a nice logo. Thank you. So, there is time for questions, and I see that the hands are raised already. Um, so that plot that you showed, why does the um, relative improvement reduce with the number of nodes? And how would you think that would affect when you've got you know, truly scaled out? So that, that's a strong scaling. So that's basically related to um, the effect of making um, the first data point that fast actually has a bad effect when you, when you scale out in the, in the tail. So that's basically just strong scaling behavior. Uh, is it possible to specify the CAC? First, we have machine many CAC, uh, co-processor. Is it possible to specify using the library? Um, so if I understand your question correctly, you're asking how you specify which co-processor to use. Yeah. Um, that's easy. The co-processors are just numbered, so from 0 to n minus 1. Mm -hmm. And then PyMic ha basically has an array of co-processor handles, and you can just draw from from that array and access the, uh, the uh, so I have another question. Uh, are you planning to support uh, to write the kernel in kind of uh, Python language a pro? Because uh, I think the main view of it is uh, mainly for people do not know to how to do programming in C or Fortran, and you want to uh, write operation in Python, let's say, or abstract Python, what, okay. kind of and you translate it into the core Co-processor, or is that uh, not planning to support that? Um, so we're not planning to support standard Python. So we have a Python interpreter running on the co-processor, but the performance is so-so, right? And you, do, you, don't, you don't even think about threading across you know, the whole machine. So that doesn't work in Python natively. Um, so what we are thinking about is actually using Cython. Um, so you could write close to Python code with a, just a little touch of native. Um, augmentation to it, and you could do open in Perl uh, execution in Python. So that might be a way where, where we can, you know, close the gap between the native programmer, uh, the Python ninja, and the ninja programmer that writes C, C++. So that's, that's our plan. Okay, so there is one last question here. Your example only shows whole array operations. Would it work if you have a write uh, for loops over the NumPy array? Would it translate eff efficiently to a kernel? Are you asking to split up the arrays? No, no. If if you if you you would write range uh, uh, for loops over NumPy arrays, which you shouldn't do in normal Python, would it be fast when you translate it to your kernel? Like uh, for for x in range, for y in range, for c in range over the three D. It it depends on how you would write the kernel. So you know if you if you just offload the innermost part of the loop, like you know the fast running part of the loop, um, then you would likely be killed by data transfers. So you would probably need to remove the whole Python nest and write a bigger kernel that covers the whole Python nest and transfer everything over, run your nested loop nest, and then come back to the host. Okay, well, thank you.